Hi, this is Luke Heavy, Editorial Director of New Tech Press, and I'm here with an old Chris Mack, the uh, self-named litho guru, as I see here on his Skype thing. Um, Chris, you've been around this uh, semiconductor manufacturing industry for a long time, and you are well-respected in what you have to say. There were all kinds of things flying around at Semicon this uh, week regarding where the industry is and where the technology is available, specifically in the area of EUV and 450 millimeter uh, manufacturing. And I wanted to find out from you, from your pers your pretty much independent perspective, where where is the industry right now? Well, when you talk about EUV and 450, you're really talking about three things not two. First, there's UV lithography and tools made to um, do lithography and manufacturing. Then there's 450 millimeter uh, um, tools in general for 450 millimeter fabs. And then there's the third thing, EUV lithography tools that are capable of processing 450 millimeter wafers. Right. right? So really, those are three different things. And so when people talk about EUV and 450, they might be talking about two or three of those things. So it can be a little confusing. So because, I mean, it could be that EUV doesn't make it. Nobody does the EUV lithography. But 450 millimeter does make it. And we build 450 millimeter fabs using other lithography approaches, not EUV, right? And if somebody's talking about the availability of 450 millimeter tools, well, they might be talking about that. If someone's talking about EUV and say, when is EUV going to be available? Well, EUV is going to be available if it is ever used in manufacturing. It will be available first at 300 millimeters. So when someone says, well, here's when EUV will be available, chances are they're talking about EUV 300 millimeter tools. And then... The, the third thing, the overlap of the two, is when would an EUV 450 millimeter tool be available? And when you said an analyst uh, predicted uh, 2020, um, my guess is that's what he meant. It would be 2020 at the earliest before a 450 millimeter EUV lithography tool was available for manufacturing. Okay. And that, in fact, is um, consistent with the recent announcement by ASML that they are taking customer investments. So Intel has invested um, something like 10%, uh, is going to be investing something like 10% of Intel, and then contributing money uh, for 450 millimeter tool development. I think it's very clear, ASML has said a number of times, that they do not have the resources to develop EUV for manufacturing and to develop 450 millimeter tools at the same time. So they told everyone, we're gonna focus on EUV, we're gonna develop 300 millimeter EUV lithography tools, we're gonna get them out there, and once they're established in manufacturing, then we'll start working on 450 millimeter tools. And apparently that was not to the uh, uh, liking of companies like Intel, who decided that they needed uh, an accelerated timetable for the development of 450 millimeter tools, thus the investment and the R&D funding coming from Intel to ASML specifically to accelerate the development of 450 millimeter tools at ASML. And basically, uh, a, a company like ASML, they can't do it all. The investments are too large to do all of these projects. EUV at 300 millimeters, other lithography tools at 450 millimeters, and eventually EUV at 450 millimeters. They just don't have the resources to do everything. Um, in their press releases, which came out of you know this week, um, I believe that the goal of the Intel R&D investment was to enable um, the development of EUV 450 millimeter tools by 2018. I think that's what they basically said. Um, but that would have to be, you know, the very first prototype tools coming out. So you can imagine 2020 being a very realistic date for
four uh, 450 millimeter EUV tools being available. So that all that timing and that time frame makes sense. Now, other companies like KLA could be developing their 450 millimeter tools, and they could have those available at some other date. And it's certainly possible to build a 450 millimeter fab that doesn't use EUV lithography, in which case you would need the 450 millimeter EUV tools to be available uh, either. Now, when Simer's talking about the availability of EUV, I can guarantee you they're not thinking about 450. Simer doesn't care about 450 millimeter wafers. That doesn't really concern them too much. Um, mostly, it's it's simply uh, the light source. Uh, it's going to be about the same regardless of the tool, 450 tool or a 300 millimeter tool. So when Simer talks about the availability of their uh, of EUV lithography, they're just talking about when are these first 300 millimeter tools going to be available. Um, now, the history is ASML has manufactured six uh, pre-production tools, the NXE 3100, and they've already shipped them to customers, and they're already printing wafers with these six tools. And Simer has shipped some of the sources, the light sources, I think for five of those six tools. And so they're in the field, uh, and they are printing wafers. But they're printing wafers at uh, throughputs of you know something like five wafers an hour. So it's very much um, it's a it's a pre version of the pre production tool. Um, the original uh, spec on the pre production tool was that it should be able to process sixty wafers an hour. They're not there yet. Simer is promising to upgrade their sources in the field by the end of this year to achieve the 60 wafer per hour throughput uh, for the pre-production tool. And that's a throughput that's probably high enough that most of the, these six companies that have purchased an NXE 3100 tool to be able to use that tool to develop a process for process development. And that's the real goal here is process development to insert EUV lithography into a, a process flow at well, probably the 14 nanometer node at the earliest. Now, next year, ASML is promising to deliver the 3300, which is a production tool. And the production tool is supposed to start off with a throughput of 120 wafers an hour. I think that's the latest. The specs are uh, changing. So... <laughs> There, there needs to be this continuous improvement in source power so that the throughput can get up to reasonable levels. Um, but the throughputs that, if, if the plan goes absolutely flawlessly from here out, which it has not done up till now, but let's suppose that the plans that ASML and Simer and the other source manufacturers have proposed for the coming years goes exactly on schedule. Um, it would be impossible to imagine EUV being used in manufacturing before 2014, but even more realistically, 2015, if everything goes according to plan. That's the kind of time frame when EUV at 300 millimeter wafers might be available, might be reasonably used in manufacturing. Now, um, history has taught us that aggressive technology development plans rarely go according to plan. It hasn't happened so far. I, I would I would find it virtually impossible to believe that the 2014-2015 time frame that EUV would in fact be ready for manufacturing. Other than somebody deciding, I'm going to manufacture with it anyways. Right? Even though the throughput is not high enough uh, to give me any kind of a reasonable uh, cost. Um, I have the tool. I paid for it. I made I, I, I made the risky bet that I'm going to buy some of these tools and and try them um, because the upside of them working is is very great. Uh, so I'm going to buy them anyways. Well, now that I bought them, I might as well use them, even though the throughput is not even close to being uh, cost effective. Uh, it's, you know that could, that kind of scenario could play out. Could have some some people running 
in, in 2015, uh, EV in production uh, at throughputs of, you know, 20 or 30 or 50 wafers an hour order of a tool like that. But they might, they might use the tools that they have. Uh, and I don't know what the latest number is, but last year uh, ASML had said that um, s customers had committed to buying 10 of the production NXE 3300 tools. So they have some commitments for people to buy these tools. I don't know how strong those commitments are. If uh, they don't meet the throughput specs, do they have to still pay for them? I'm not sure. Um, I'm actually a little bit surprised that at the renewed interest in 450 millimeters lately. Um, to me, it represents uh, a feeling of desperation on the part of of the big fabs, Intel, Samsung, DSMC, uh, who are looking at the 14 nanometer node, the 10 nanometer node, uh, and even beyond, and saying, how can we make money at these nodes? Um, the costs of manufacturing are rising so quickly that everyone's worried that you know, we will build it, but nobody will come. Uh, we will be able to uh, build a, a 14 nanometer uh, technology node devices, but there won't be a market for them because the cost per transistor will actually be higher than the 22 nanometer uh, node devices. Or maybe it'll be at the 10 nanometer node where the cost per device will be higher than at the 14 nanometer node. And as soon as that happens, your market share, the number of people interested in that technology node goes down to uh, to almost zero. I mean, there will still be a few people that need the power, the the number of transistors that you can get with the new technology node. But for the most part, nobody's going to, most people will not go to a new technology node if the cost per transistor isn't, you know, at least 10% uh, lower, uh, at least some percent lower. Uh, if it's the same or higher, forget it, right? That technology node will not work. So I think the industry players are getting scared because it looks like there's a progression towards uh, a couple of nodes down where uh, the transistors won't be cheaper. They'll be more expensive because of the higher cost of, of processing. Um, so what's one way to address that? Uh, a, t a technology used to address that a technique used to address that for the throughout the history of our industry has been increasing the wafer size. Right. Because some costs are per wafer. When you increase the wafer size, you can lower the cost per unit area on the wafer and therefore lower the cost per chip um, relative to the, the smaller wafer size. So that's the hope. Let's move to 450 and maybe we can fix this trend where the cost per transistor is not scaling the way we want it to. Right. Um, I'm not sure that that will work this time. It's worked so far every time in the past. Will it work this time? Will going to 450 um, lower the cost uh, compared to that manufacturing the same devices on a 300 millimeter wafer? Um, That, a lot of that depends on how the funding for 450 millimeter uh, development and R&D uh, is accomplished. Um, the traditional model, the past model of, of simply letting the equipment suppliers pay for all of the development work, um, it probably won't work at 450 millimeters. Most companies have, set, have said over the last five years that it won't work at 450. And the recent announcement that Intel is making an investment in ASML in order to speed up 450 millimeter development at ASML is a clear indication that the old funding models aren't working. Here's Intel making an equity investment in ASML and paying for R&D directly to develop yeah. 450 millimeter tools. That's a good indication that the old business model just let apply materials and KLA 10 core and, and Novellus and every other company pay for their own 450 millimeter tool development, um, it, it's not working. Now, what that means for all the other equipment players, I'm not sure. But 
um, it's going to be, it's going to have to be the semiconductor suppliers, semiconductor um, manufacturers rather, uh, who take the risk and make the upfront expenditure to develop 450 millimeter tools, not the suppliers. Now, given all of that, is it possible that somebody will build 450 millimeter fab without EUV? Um, yeah, I think it is possible. I think, I think the reason to go to 450 millimeter is different than the reason to go to EUV. And uh, if 450 millimeter is a wise investment from a, a fab perspective, then it's going to be a wise investment for 193 immersion multiple patterning. Right? The cost savings there uh, are going to be the same as the cost savings at, say, EUV. Um, so there seems to be no reason to link 450 to EUV. Uh, as a result, if EUV doesn't make it in terms of being a viable manufacturing solution in the next you know, five years, then uh, we could still pursue 450 millimeter development just using some other lithography technology, such as multiple patterning with 193 immersion. Okay. Would does EUV make it possible to extend the life of 300 millimeter, so people wouldn't even have to consider 450? Uh, you know, I think they're almost separate, unless these. Uh, 300 millimeter tools that come out in the next couple of years from ASML perform better than the roadmap, that their throughputs are, are high enough that uh, 300 millimeter fabs can develop, produce 10 nanometer technology node devices at a lower cost per tra transistor. If, if that happens, if, if EUV exceeds our expectations as a manufacturing technology, uh, it could reduce the pressure on the fabs to move to 450. I consider that highly unlikely. Why? Because I don't think EUV will have the throughput required to make it a low cost lithography option. I think it's gonna be a high cost lithography option. And so all the cost pressures that are forcing the fabs to move to 450 millimeter development will still be there, even if EUV turns on in manufacturing uh, in the next five years. So, Chris, thank you very much for your time, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime.